Would you like to catch big fish? Well, hi, I'm Steve D, professional fishing angler of over 48 years. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you the basic knots and rigs for you to get started to go catch the big ones. And we're starting right now. For the purpose of this knot demonstration, I am using a white shoelace, just so you can see. So I've pretty much put the line through the swivel and we're going to perform a blood knot. Now blood knot is what you're going to use 90% of the time. Okay, so you just twist around about six times. And then this loop here, you put the line through and the loop that you formed there, you put it through a second time. Your line through there, that'll actually double lock it. So then when it pulls down nice and tight, it'll come out to the side. So that is going to that double lock is very, very important. Now that knot is what you're going to use for 90% of the time. And uh, I didn't wet this, but you should always put saliva on your knots as well. So I hope you can see that okay there, but that is called a blood knot double locked. Okay, so this is a saltwater brim rig. So I've got a red plastic tube at the top. I've got a number two ball sinker. Um, in the middle and I've got a red bead which is above a double locked blood knot so the bead stops the sinker from hitting and weakening the knot and then we've got a suicide hook uh, for the brim a special uh, hook that uh, catches more brim because of its shape and uh, so that's how I would set up uh, a brim rig now red is uh, an attack flare color for off fish so when they see red, um, they associate it with blood and they react and they bite the bait. So whether you're fishing for brim, whether you're fishing for whiting, thousands of whiting fishermen use the uh, red tubing and the bead uh, for many, many, many years. And uh, But you can use it for all species as well. So that's a brim rig. I hope you find that handy. Give it a go and catch a heap of brim. Now you can use this rig, uh, you can use uh, prawns, packet of prawns, or you can also use live yabbies. Uh, live bloodworms is really good as well. Uh, all the live sandworms as well are good baits for brim. Now this is a whiting rig. So you can see it's got a long, long trace. So up this end I've got a number two ball sinker tied to a little swivel and a long two foot trace for whiting. It's got a, a red tube and a red bead above a long shank hook. So the whiting have got a prolonged uh, protruding mouth so um, it, you need a long shank hook when you're fishing for whiting compared to the short suicide hooks for brim because they've got a smaller mouth. Now the red will attract more fish, it will uh, bring more fish to you. So that is how you do a whiting hook rig. Now you, I would recommend using the, light, the lightest sinker as possible. If you can get away with a size two or if you've got to go heavier because the current um, is stronger uh, you'll have to do so or you can go lighter if it's no current at all so it's light as possible because you don't want the whiting feeling the weight you want to try to use as light a possible sinker when you are fishing for any species so this is another rig so I've just tied a little small live bait savage hook these are my uh, hooks of choice when I am uh, live baiting live shrimp for Australian bass but you can use any live bait so I've just tied a blood knot onto 
the um, the hook and then from the eye of the hook I've just tied another knot trace a dropper trace which is about two foot long and on the end of that I've just got a triple zero dropper sinker uh, this is really good because when this dropper sinker hits the bottom you know that your bait is going to be two foot with that trace up off the bottom so it's really good um, you don't get snagged as you would if you had a sinker right above the um, eye of the hook. Now there are situations where you can use that rig at, as well but I have found when you're fishing very snaggy country the dropper rig which is what this is called the, the dropper rig seems to work very very well and a lot of the reef fishermen will use this um, on a bigger heavier scale heavier sinkers bigger hooks so the dropper rig give it a go very good for live baiting if you're live baiting shrimps live baiting mullet live baiting fish live yabbies give it a go if you're fishing in some very snaggy country because this will work really well Okay, so here's a rig for the uh, lure fisherman. Now this is a small speedy snap. Very, very small speedy snap. And I like using the smaller speedy snaps when using fishing lures like jig heads with soft plastic, paddle tails, uh, vibes, blades. Um, it gives you an advantage because it allows you to change your lure selection in a matter of seconds. So. I've just got it tied to my nice long leader. Um, I use fluorocarbon straight through uh, the gamma uh, touch for the spinning reels I use and the um, edge, gamma edge for the bait casters because I believe fluorocarbon is more invisible than normal mono. Mono will float, good if you're using surface lures, but if you want your lures to sink, fluorocarbon is the only way and that's why most people will use fluorocarbon leaders on uh, all their lure applications because it gives you the stealth total invisibility so yeah get as small as you can speedy snaps put it on tie it on your leader and you can change your uh, lures in second it does not impede the action that much if you get the right type of speedy snap So since we're talking about lures, this is an extra bonus tip. This is a high concentrated garlic scent spray bottle. Um, and I swear by this, all my lures, doesn't matter what lure it is, I'll put scent on the, uh, the lure. Um, now, if I'm using a spinner bait or, or a vibration jig or chatter bait, I won't get it on the silicon skirts, but I will put it on the plastic trailer, tip it upside down the skirts, get the uh, strands of silicon away from uh, the plastic trailer and soak it with this garlic high concentrated uh, scent. This works really well with the saltwater brim, the flathead and the Australian bass or any species of bass will love this. Get yourself some nice uh, sharp line cutters or nail clippers. Uh, with a very very sharp edge on there that is really good for trimming tag ends and cutting your lines 